The following Spanish class is brought to you by Metro Floors, where you can find quality flooring made affordable. Voted Antelope Valley's best for 23 years, Metro Floors also has an A plus Better Business Bureau rating. Metro Floors, simply the best. Today we are going to discuss number and gender. So when I say number, what do I mean? I mean whether or not the noun is singular or plural whether there is one or many. And gender, whether or not the noun is masculine or feminine. Rule number one. Adjectives must agree in number and gender with the nouns they modify. In order to understand the previous rule, we must understand clearly what it means to agree in number and gender. So we are going to first talk about gender. Spanish nouns are classified into two categories, masculine and feminine. This has nothing to do with the noun itself or its use. For example, corbata, which is a necktie, is used by men, yet the noun is feminine, la corbata. Words that end in an O are usually classified as masculine. Most words that end in an A, dad, or sion, are classified as feminine. Again, I emphasize usually classified and most words, as there are some exceptions which we will see later. You will recall from last class that we talked about articles, which were el, la, los, las, un, una, unos, unas, which are used based on the gender and number of the noun they precede. Let's look at some examples. La casa, which is feminine. El gato, masculine. If we add an adjective or a descriptive word to the previous Spanish nouns, the adjectives must agree with the noun's gender. For example, la casa bonita, el gato bonito. The words bonita and bonito mean the same thing. They both mean pretty. But since la casa is feminine, pretty has to be bonita, which is also feminine. Likewise for el gato, which is masculine. The type of pretty for el gato also has to be masculine, which is bonito. Even if there are multiple adjectives describing the same noun, all of those adjectives have to agree with that particular noun's gender. See the following examples. La casa blanca es hermosa. The white house is beautiful. El gato negro es lindo. The black cat is pretty. If a certain adjective doesn't end in an O, then the exact same word is used to modify both masculine and feminine nouns, except for adjectives that end in on, dor, whose feminine counterparts are ona, dora. Let's take a look at some examples. Este niño es muy obediente. This boy is very obedient. Ella es obediente porque ama a sus padres. She is obedient because she loves her parents. Notice that the adjective in Spanish is obediente, which ends in an E, and therefore the adjective does not change even when it refers to a boy or a girl. Let's look at some more examples. Yo trato de ser un estudiante trabajador. I try to be a hard-working student. Nuestras madres son super trabajadoras. Our mothers are super hard workers. Notice that the adjectives here are trabajador and trabajadoras. Remember previously that we said that dor was masculine and dora was feminine? 
Therefore, in this case, they change based on the noun that they modify. Now that we have completely covered gender, let's move on and talk about number. In Spanish, to make a noun plural, follow this simple rule. If the noun ends in a vowel, just add S. If the noun ends in a consonant, just add ES. When an adjective is used to describe a plural noun, it must be made plural also. Take a look at the following examples. Las actividades son divertidas. The activities are fun. Sus palabras son sinceras. His words are sincere. Mis hermanos son abogados, pero yo y mi hermana somos doctores. My brothers are lawyers, but my sister and I are doctors. Do you remember when I said there were some exceptions? Now it's time for the exceptions. Some words in Spanish are borrowed from Greek and end in ma. All of these are masculine. El problema, el tema, el drama, el sistema. There are some other irregular gender words that are tricky. La mano, the hand, la moto, or la motocicleta, the motorcycle, la foto, or la fotografía, the photograph, el día, the day, la radio, the radio, el radio, the radius, el planeta, the planet. We will now conclude with the last type of irregular gender words. Some nouns have a stressed A sound in their first syllable. Even if these words are feminine, you put an L in front of them when they are singular. This is done so that the A at the end of LA won't just blend into the a sound at the beginning of the first syllable. Let's take a look at some of the examples. El agua, las aguas. El águila, las águilas. El hacha, las hachas. You see, the S on the end of the plural article, las, separates the two A's. So, you keep it feminine in the plural, and you make it masculine in the singular. Otherwise, it'd be lagua, lagi, uh, lagila, lacha, and that's not correct. It's el agua, el aguila, el hacha, and then you make it feminine in plural, las aguas, las aguilas, las hachas. Don't forget to practice. Subscribe to our Metro Flores YouTube channel to stay up to date with free Spanish class videos. Thank you for watching. Until next time, Viva Metro Flores.